<laughs> Good. Well, uh, as I said, we uh, our the the ministry is called Global Outreach Day. That is focusing actually on one day in the year, where the vision is that every Christian around the world, at least on that day, should give the gospel, the good message, what uh, the Lord, just to at least one person. Of course, we don't believe just in evangelizing one day a year, that's not enough. But there are so many people, actually statistics say that 93% of all Christians in born-again churches around the world are not really regularly reaching other people. They are not evangelizing. So that's amazing uh, high number. And uh, we believe that can change. Uh, I hope you believe it also. That's why we're here in Hong Kong. and. Um, my wife and I do also evangelism in Frankfurt, Germany, on a regular basis. We have monthly outreaches with a couple of people. Right now we're around about 30. And this is fun. Um, that, uh, I didn't believe that a couple of years ago. Because I'm not the evangelist that you might think of. You know, my father was. He, when he got born again, bah, the, he, he just told everybody in a loud voice, you know, like preaching and testifying and everything. He, he was the typical evangelist. So I was not. Actually, I was kind of um, afraid, and not really f just for the people, but you know, when it comes to faith. Uh, I will come to that in a little bit, but I try for this morning, the short time we have together, because normally we do also really trainings the whole day and so, I will try to give as much input as possible that you get inspired but also get a little bit of practical details how you really get on the next level because you know every one of us here that is born again and knows Jesus in his heart it should be our desire that other peoples come to Jesus I mean it's not just a, a, our wish it's not just something like we you, you would wish everybody should have it's actually the command of our savior he's the uh, he's the command of the army you know we are not just the bride we are not just the house of god we are not just the family it's all true it's all wonderful but we are an army amen, amen. so so if if the commander says move what should the army do move, move. that is true and uh, but for 2000 years the commander said go and um, as my former boss, uh, evangelist Rainer Bonke said, the, since Pentecost, the traffic light is on green. So it says go. Now we don't need for, to wait for another go command. We just have to go. So the commander says, since 2,000 years, go. And what does the church do? No. no. Well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, 7% maybe go and the majority stays because of course the churches are nice and we, we, uh, we all know how it is and it's not to blame anybody blaming and condemning doesn't lead to anything it's uh, we need change and we need empowerment yeah and our heart the first thing is that our heart has changed but I just wanted to give you as an introduction uh, just go to Ma uh, Mark 16 verse 15 just to to get this straight, what Jesus said to us, maybe you can bring it on the screen. That's a great command. He said, and he said unto them, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And that's enough for a whole lifetime. And also for all of your family, for all of your neighbors, that is, go ye. Well, uh, in your, uh, it says different in your translation, but this, this means everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody is included. So the first question, who should evangelize, should be able to answer by all of us quite easily. So who should go? Okay, everybody. Well, that's no problem. I take that too. Uh, so who should go? Everybody. Yeah, we, you and I. So, and I know that there are a lot of excuses in our hearts, and I was at the same place, you know, because we think we are not qualified, we are not gifted and anything. I come to that a later part, but you should really submit your heart to that fact that all of us are really called and commissioned to reach persons for this. That's not even a question, actually, if you, if you understand the Bible. Amen? Amen. So... 
So the question is, why should we also evangelize? I mean, what is the motivation of our heart? It's not just that we do our duty and, uh, well, like, okay, Jesus said it, I would like to play the guitar more than I would like to go out. You know, I'm a, I said it to my wonderful brother here, I'm a worship leader, I'm a musician. I played it since years and years. And it's, it's more comfortable playing worship than um, testifying. It's a fact, <laughs> at least most of the time. Sometimes um, you have a hard time in the church too, but not in this church <laughs> to, to lead worship. You know, but... but um, why should we do it? Not just like, oh, I need this, my duty, because we love people. You know, those people outside, there are millions of Hong Kong, precious Hong Kong people. I really love this nation and this city, but they're all uh, on the way to destruction. I mean, most of them. That's a fact, statistically. And this should touch our heart. We shouldn't be just, uh, you know? And when is the perfect time to evangelize? Now. now. Now is the uh, time, uh, the, the Bible says, this is the day of salvation, now is the time of salvation. So, um, and that's why I wanted to give you some points that really should help you. I hope so. Because um, you have something to give. Now this is very important. If you make notes, then write this down. Your story is so important. The world cannot miss your story. You know, everyone who is born again has experienced Jesus Christ in a way nobody else ever has and ever will. This is so important because if you are not kind of out of a you, drug addict or kind, really a hard testimony, you know, we all know that these kind of testimony you touch our hearts, uh, but most of the Christians do not have this background, uh, probably in, in normal churches, I would say. And so we tend to think, okay, well, what I experienced with the Lord is not really so special, but it's a total lie from hell, you know? You are the living proof that Jesus is alive today. You, not just a, a wonder or a miracle or something. You personally, your story witnesses of the gospel. And people need to hear it. This is so precious. I, I, don't, I cannot overemphasize this. Because, uh, you know, we all have our... We, we all are not perfect. And we all have, f may have fears or any, you, you may have a whole list of things which you think, oh my God, if, if I would stand, let's say, if I would stand before 100 people and should share what I have experienced with Jesus, you say, oh, I cannot, I'm afraid, or my story is really not precious, but it's all wrong because, you know, God ha could have chosen angels that the gospel would go out in all the world. Uh, they never have disobeyed and they are total and perfect and everybody would say they are more qualified but they are not they are not the ones who, uh, who are privileged to share the gospel why? you know why? because they are not witnesses they have seen the resurrection and the crucifixion but they, did, they haven't been raised from the dead with Jesus themselves. But you have, and I. So you can say, I, once I was a sinner, now I'm a saint. Once I was dead, but now I'm alive. Once I was sick, or whatever your story is. Once my, my marriage was torn apart, and now I'm healthy again. No angel can say that. They never were, were dead. They never were sick. They never were alone. They didn't have a broken family. Now this makes you very special. And the devil tries to say to us, okay, come on, it's not real. They are not interested. You know, if, when, you st when you're talking about anything, about fashion, about uh, education, you can talk about any worldly subject. It's kind of good. But when you come to the gospel, to the truth, uh, something changes in the atmosphere and you feel sometimes intimidated uh, the other person so that is the point where you have to just see what uh, focus on what you already are in Christ and what you have because the world doesn't you are so ri so much richer than all of these bank managers in these big buildings they don't have what you have if they are not born again you know they can drive whatever car they want in Germany they have a lot of money too I come from Frankfurt which is 
there are a lot of big cars there. And uh, I always think, though, these are poor people. Now, the world will laugh at you at that statement, but the eternity will show that you are the rich ones. You are a king, you are a queen, you are a hero, you already are. Amen? Amen. 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 Anybody believes that? Yes. If that is our identity, that's not just our wish, our dream, our promise, that is what we are now. Say now. Now. Yes, <laughs> you are already. You're beautiful. You're powerful inside, and it will, we have to learn that this will come out, that it shows to other people, you know? And uh, so that is very important. The first thing is you should learn how to share your testimony. Um, that is a basic thing, but for, not, for every Christian it's a really uh, experience. So I give you three points. You should, uh, first of all, don't, when, you, when you have a chance to share your testimony, don't tell or let's, let me put it this way. You should be able to make it short. <coughs> be, uh, to practice it to, to share a testimony in three minutes, not in 30. <laughs> yes, because sometimes we like, when we are familiar and it's a good atmosphere, we like to talk and talk and so on. But, uh, but it's good to have it short. I would say in German, I would say short and spicy. Or, uh, you know what I mean? It's that it, uh, that it gets to the people in, in a short time. So practice it. Do, do this as a homework. Write your testimony, your personal testimony down and find a brother, sister and share it in three minutes. And do it like this. There's a, in three points. What, ha what was your life before Jesus came? How, second, how did Jesus come into your life? And third is, what is your life now? What has changed? What is different? How can you see, feel, and testify what the Lord changed in your life? So don't talk three, uh, two minutes and 50 seconds about all the bad stuff that happened to you before <laughs> and at the end say, oh, now I am believing, I'm going to church, amen. <laughs> now, now that is not so really attractive, although church is maybe a great place, but not for, in Germany, not for, I couldn't even say, I, I cannot make advertisement with the church where I come from, you know, because that's not an attraction point for people. The, uh, most of the time it's boring, maybe religious, and then best it's, they are indifferent about it, you know, well, it's good for you. But they, they need to see someone <laughs> who, who, who changes their belief about church and Jesus. They need to see it, to feel it, and, and that is you. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Hopefully you believe that more at the end than in the beginning, but it's a progress. So three minutes and practice it. Do this. This was hard for me. I mean, we, we sat down with kind of a, a timer and then, uh, yeah, well, it's, it's, it's very useful. It's not like, uh, not a legalistic law. If somebody listens to you for an hour, then, uh, then share everything. Uh, but, but most of the time, people are really, get them hungry, you know, get them interested. Don't share the best thing all in the, uh, but, but make a good story out of it, what Jesus really has done. So, when you, when you have learned that, that your story is very important, we, uh, you, you will find out that your personal testimony may not lead the people to Jesus without anything else. So we all need to know what the gospel actually is and should be able to put it in very short uh, kind of information. Now I'm telling you this in kind of preparation because hopefully, and I know that Pastor Rene and also all of your leaders will encourage you to share the gospel on the 14th of June, which is this year's Global Outreach Day. So on this day, millions of Christians all around the world will share the gospel. We expect at least 10 million Christians in Brazil, uh, a couple of millions in Asia and in countries where it's not so openly allowed to share the gospel. We will have in Europe, in America, in Africa, masses. So. Um, there is a massive mobilization within prayer. Millions of Christians will pray on Friday the 13th and on Saturday the 14th they will go out. So probably you may think, hopefully you will be a part of it and um, then you should not only maybe think about reaching your neighbor, your friend, your colleague, the, whom you already know, but also people you don't know. Amen? Amen. That's just a basic thing. If, if you only share the gospel to people you know, we will never sh get the whole world because there are, too less, there are not enough Christians. We cannot have a relationship with all of Hong Kong. 
in Frankfurt. It's impossible. So uh, to reach those people, you have to get them interested. What you want to say, and you have to share them the gospel in a short time. So I give you just the four main points. You know, that's kind of just uh, basic information you may want to write down. Um, the gospel is act. Who does not know what the gospel really says? Now, I should have asked actually the other way around. But, uh, you know, you, if somebody should call you at 2 o'clock in the night and ask you, what is the gospel in two minutes, could you do it? Uh, that happened with some of our um, uh, young people in, in Germany when we were out. So they evangelized and this person was so stirred up. He did not get saved in the evening, but he was calling four o'clock in the night saying, tell me again, what was this about Jesus? And he got saved in the morning on the telephone. So this is uh, something that will be happen to you also. Uh, amen. <laughs> so, I give you just four points just to check it out later. The first thing is God in the beginning made everything perfect. He created a perfect world and we as humans were perfect. Amen? We, we should have relationship with God. But the second point is that we as humans, we all have sinned. Uh, so that is the reason why we need salvation and why there is evil, sickness, any kind of things that does not look like heaven. That is the reason why it's on earth. So you can uh, bring this in, um, you can read this in Romans 3 verse 10 or verse 23 where it says, All of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. There is no righteous, no not one. Uh, that is for all people, all humankind on the earth. If you share the gospel, they should see that God wants, loves them, wants to have a relationship with them, but we all are on the same platform. All of us need salvation, we need a savior, because we all have sins. And you don't have to get onto, into their face and say, you are a sinner. I mean, if, if somebody needs it, you really could say it, you know, uh, but that is actually most of the case not not true. You, you, that really doesn't bring you. Uh, just bring them to agree. I mean, is there something in your life you know you have done wrong? And most of the people would acknowledge that. Now, if, if someone is very hardened, you have to work on that a little bit but, uh, to, to communicate. But in general, they agree, we all are not perfect. And then you can bring it into the spiritual sense that in, in God's eyes, it's not like uh, our standards are counting. His standards are perfect. And he calls it sin. Uh, so, so that is one very important point. The third point is, of course, only Jesus saves. Only Jesus can us bring to God. Only he is salvation. He's the only one to the Father, and He died on the cross and raised from the dead, and so on. That is uh, the fact that everybody needs to hear and believe in the heart, right? Yeah. right. So, uh, because uh, I want to share you some other interesting practical things, I will make this very short. But the fourth thing is very important also. Now, if they believe that, and I believe it's good for you, they will still go to hell. Why? Because they need to decide for themselves. Amen? The fourth thing is everyone needs to make a decision. You know? Answer the call for themselves. Nobody will get kidnapped into heaven. Even if you like it. They need to make the choice for themselves. The, you know, amen? So that's also good. When you talk to people, have this in mind, that you want to lead them from the, from the place where they are lost, dying, in despair, to Jesus. It's not just having a good conversation and bringing them to church. Of course that is good. But if you have the goal to lead them to Jesus, then you need to bring them to a point of decision. Yeah? I forgot, well... I kind of, I had to learn this, to be honest. We had, uh, well, the starting is to learn to com communicate and to have good talks and they are open and you feel they are touched. But then somehow you say, oh, I need to go, G goodbye, bless you, I pray for you and so on. And it's not really accomplished. The, the, the Lord, the Holy Spirit really wants to use you to bring them to the point where they are saved. Now this is a, a journey, this is a progress, you have to learn this, but it's possible. Amen? Amen.
So I give you some kind of practical details, uh, what makes it easier. The, that's the message, your testimony and the gospel message, but you need to communicate it. Communication is something that's very important, because if no one listens, you can have the best message. If they don't care, it won't help. So, at first you need their attention. How do you get their attention? Well, say hello. <laughs> I don't know if, uh, well, you have to work on it. I, I, I know that they're busy in Hong Kong and it's kind of like this Western high, um, the mentality of they're bombarded with information, with uh, there are a lot of people that don't really care so much when they are in the public places. But um, you should be able to get in a conversation. And uh, don't get nervous about it. I mean, just you, you don't have to, uh, hello, I'm a Christian, and uh, do you know that God loves you, and he has a plan for your life, and you can repent right now from your sin, because he wants you to be saved, and so on. Now, that is all true, but normally it probably would not start, um, for the majority, the, the people that I know, it would not start a good conversation. Now, why is that? You, you may say, well, the Western world is not so open for the gospel. True, but let's find ways how they are open, okay? I mean, not just wait until we have here the same openness like in other kind of countries where you see revival happening, then the people are really hungry, but we have to work with that that is here, amen? So how do you get to people, how do you get in the conversation when they don't want to listen to your preaching? What do you think? Yeah, well, how do you get people that they talk to you? Well, that's a very good and simple principle. Ask questions. Ask them something. Then they have to answer something. And then you, you know, the, the, the very, one of the most important principles when it comes to personal witnessing a com is communi the communication principle number one is listen, don't talk. Yeah? Get, get the people to talk. They sh let them share about their life. You, normally you should anyway be interested what, what their life is about, what, maybe what their problems, what their family, what their circumstances. We, we are not here just to like, they are not victims of your evangelism gift. <laughs> <laughs> they are just victims of the devil who needs someone to, to help them. And uh, so it's good to get in the communication, ask them. Now there are, um, uh, we, we have, by the way, we have a, a little booklet that shares this much more detail. So I will just fly through some things which I hope inspire you. That's why we're going very fast. But in general, you should, uh, there are two kinds of questions you can ask, um, basically. We, we, we call them open and closed question. That means actually the, the closed question is a question you only can answer yes or no. Okay, and the open question, you, can, you, you have to answer in detail. For example, if I ask you, uh, my Pastor René, I mean, I know what he says, but if I would ask him, do you believe in God? Yes. He says yes. Well, he, I wouldn't evangelize him anyway, <laughs> but, uh, <clears throat> but this kind of question, you only can answer yes or no. Do you understand? So if you, if you come to them, do you love Jesus? Well, he can say yes or no. Uh, you say, are you interested in hearing what I have experienced about God? No. He only can say yes or no. <laughs> so do you have a little more time? No. no. So that kind of question lead you on a place where the communication may be very short. You understand? So ask them different questions. The open question start with, in Germany we say with W, uh, the letter W in English it doesn't work so good, but the what, how, when, uh, ask them these kind of things. So if you start with the, uh, with the right away with the spiritual, I mean coming to a spiritual point, no, you, you could ask them, what do you work, what do you do for a living, or kind of things, and, that you, um, and this he has to explain. But if you, you could, it's totally okay if you just talk a little bit about something non, in, quote, non-spiritual, but if you come to the point, then it's better to ask, what do you believe about God?
instead of do you believe in God? Now you can of course do the other way around also, but, but this is a, a tool that gets you the people in a conversation and you want to ha talk with them actually because when you talk and share each other he gives you th probably the right to share also something from your heart from your life from your past and then you can bring in your testimony or you just answer his question the best thing is the second thing after attention should be they should be interested and uh, to the point that they have a desire for something that you have already amen a desire means they want to have what you have or they want to have what God has for them. Um, so don't, like, I would say, get people interested. You know what I mean? D get them curious. Don't give all the answers before they even ask for it. <laughs> now you have to, s that, that, that is where the Holy Spirit is very important. How you do it. That's not a method. It's not, uh, I'm trying, we, we're trying to share principles in, in the way we, um, we found them helpful. So if you come up with something else that never has anybody done all over the world, but in Hong Kong it really rocks, then you just do it, okay? But uh, these principles we just found out, I mean, we in Germany they were not waiting for someone on the streets to talk about God. They are not waiting. Uh, well, it's getting better now, but we had to be creative. You know, uh, getting, it, first of all, getting them stopped with some songs and, I mean, really good music, not these kind of slow, I mean, I love slow worship songs, but on the streets it's kind of, they are not interested, you know. But, um, and we have dances and kind of uh, theater, but get them curious. We had this funny conversation, uh, Rene said I should tell it also. We were, Werner and I, which is the leader of the ministry, is we were in Macau. And what do you do when you're in Macau? Gamble. Of course, gamble. So that's why we went to the casino. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we really did. But we didn't w go there to gamble. The truth is, we wanted to see the Rolling Stones. No, yeah, but not in the concert. Uh, now, that, that's a funny story because Werner is kind of a guy, I never met someone like him. He, he has some kind of a anointing, I don't know. He met so many famous people. He once talked with Mick Jagger. I mean, almost any kind of... And he, he just said, oh, the Rolling Stones are there. Let's go there. I need to talk with them. So I said, okay, let's try it. <laughs> So we went there and it was the day before sound check and we somehow get into the hall. Uh, it was good already because you, uh, but they, were, they weren't there. So we went the other day and we were sitting on the bus. You know, they have the shuttle buses to, uh, and then uh, a German couple sit in front of us. Uh, actually not a couple, the lady was German and the man was from Hong Kong here. They, but they were speaking German. And so, oh, they're Germans, good. And we get into a conversation. And she was kind of, she was really in party mode, like, oh, wow, we go out. And they were very kind of aufgedreht, uh, what's that? <laughs> kind of really turned up, yeah. Oh, some more Germans here. <laughs> and uh, she was asking us, now what do you do? And uh, we say, well, we go into the Rolling Stones. And he said, oh, well, the stones are boring. This is what you need to see. And she turned out her mobile phone and showed us a kind of an invitation clip to the sex show, the taboo or something like this. And uh, I mean, we were far enough to not really see all the details, but, sh <laughs> but she asked us kind of, oh, well, what do you think? And we say, well, it's not so really our thing. And, uh, <laughs> Uh, but we were talking with her, you know, and she oh, and, and it was she was very kind of. I mean, that is quite a challenge to come to to the gospel. I would say. <laughs> uh, but uh, I mean, Werner was talking with. I, I later talked with the husband. He was a little bit hard on that. But uh, Werner said, "Oh." It was kind of a funny conversation, you know, not, not religious, oh no, we, the devil or so. We just didn't look at it, you know, but, but just keep easy. Uh, and uh, she said, oh, what do you do for a living? And uh, Werner said, um, oh, I don't tell you, you would never believe it. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, and she said, no, what do you do? I said, no, no you, you won't believe it anyway. <laughs> so, so, so he kept on asking, now, now what are you? Yeah, we are pastors. Because we had also our little uh, kind of jacket on. And she, she really, honestly, she was thinking we were making a, a really good joke. And she was laughing, ah, you're never pastors. Impossible. <laughs> and uh, 
So, so Bernard said, I told you, you wouldn't believe it. <laughs> so, uh, and uh, then she, now, now what you're really doing? Is, is he, he said, we aren't pastors. No, you don't talk like a pastor. Uh, th that was, I took it as a compliment, you know. <laughs> In, in that kind of sense. I really, I like that. I mean, you can be offended, but I, I like it when those kind of people really don't think you're li religious. Because at least where I come from, religion is really, I mean, it's from, it's a devil. It, it, it keeps people from God. And if, if they think we are religious, we have lost already. Because we don't need religion to spread, we need Jesus. Amen. Amen. So the whole thing, put it short because we are very uh, short in time. It's, yeah, yeah. It, yeah you, you like the story, I know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> you, sh you should go there. Send <laughs> it to someone else. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that was actually now part of the training, you know. <laughs> try, try to do. Now, now anyway, uh, but but she really got touched. I mean, the conversation was easy for a couple of minutes, but then later, uh, we we were trying to separate. I was talking with the husband, and the, the husband was kind of trying to interrupt the conversation, which actually is good to uh, to be two, two by two, because normally you have someone who is maybe the uh, the sister know who, who uh, does evangelism. Sometimes you have one very open, and the other person is kind of sitting around and let's go or something, then uh, you just, the, the other person of you keep them busy. And uh, the one person really can share the heart. And that is good. Because this lady, it turned out she had MS, sickness, and Werner could pray for her. Tears were running down. And 15 minutes or so later when we arrived, in the casino, well, uh, not in the taboo show, but in the casino, <laughs> she gave her life to the Lord. And which is awesome. Amen. And, uh, and she got touched. So, uh, uh, so I just want to encourage you, get out of the box, get out of your own thinking. And uh, I mean, you don't have to go to the deepest, pla uh, darkest places when you totally feel intimidated by these things. But uh, it's always good to stretch you a little bit and stay normal. Amen? Um, I would love to share you more, but it's, the, there are a lot of good details. I encourage you to get the material, which we will leave with uh, Pastor René later in digital form. But I want to mention one more thing. In, uh, there is a whole thing about communication. You can learn that. But we are not just ministering, sharing in the natural. We need the supernatural. I believe that is very important, especially for Western world, of, uh, for anybody, but for our humanistic thinking. You know, you can, you can discuss hours until you're blue in the face and they might go home and think about it. But thinking does not save them. And probably it will not stir the heart. They need to be touched by the kingdom, what I call the kingdom reality. People... Uh, uh, you know, Jesus sent us out to preach the kingdom, and the kingdom of God is supernatural. It's not a system of belief and truth, uh, wisdom sentences. Also not just Bible verses, but the reality behind them. And this does mean that they will get healed, that they will get touched, they can be delivered, they can experience God for themselves. And actually that is what they need. And uh, I want to show that in that scripture, uh, one of the last things is Corinthians, just jump ahead a couple of the scriptures. First Corinthians um, chapter 2 verse 3 to 5. That is something Paul said concerning his church. And he said, I was with you in weakness, in fear, and in much trembling. Now, this is the, re the reality for most of us when we start evangelism. It's not that we should be like that, but you may sooner or later experience that. And he said, my speech and my preaching was not in persuasive words of human wisdom. Very important. So, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power. Now, that is... That your faith should not be in the wisdom of man, but in the power of God. It's very important that we do not just try to get people to become what we are, but that they experience God for themselves. Amen. That is so important. We could talk hours about it, but the reality of the kingdom will change their hearts. So you should look for, for opportunities.
that the Holy Spirit can manifest himself in the life of peoples, which means by prayer, by maybe ministering in, in words of knowledge, in, in gifts of the Spirit, by, uh, by the gifts of healing. You, you, you are qualified in general. If you're filled with the Spirit, you can move in that dimension. Now, um, you may not be experienced in it, that's okay, but, but you can do it. Don't wait until a super ev anointed evangelist comes to heal them. Pray for them. My, our, our experience is totally that unbelief is getting healed much easier than the people in the church. That is just a fact. I, uh, I could have some, some but not all explanation for it, but Jesus loves to show himself. And so, please, Try to get in, a, in, in, in when you com communicate the gospel, offer them prayer, ask them if they are sick, ask them if they have a need. You could even ask them if God would do a miracle for you today, what should it be? And then pray for that. I mean, if they don't wish, you know, the moon should be out of gold or something, uh, but something that has really, uh, uh, they probably, if they tell you an honest need, pray for them. And don't think, oh, what would not if nothing happens? That it's never. Uh, how do you say this? Correct. Always, there's always happening something. It's never nothing. You know what I mean? And we had even healings that came one day later or two days later. I had someone who had a really big growth in an evangelistic outreach in Frankfurt, and it was like an orange. It was so, uh, he was kind of a homeless person. Normally, you wouldn't run around Germany like this. And uh, we prayed for them, and two weeks later, he called me and said it really got, it fully got down. It was kind of an obsess. Uh, like it was not a, a cancer, but he called me later. So if I went dis home discouraged, uh, Later, I saw the miracle anyway. So I, I would encourage you to pray, to prophes prophesy or move in the gifts of the Spirit. Now you don't need to talk very spiritual. Uh, say, the Lord says such and such. You could do it, but uh, it's all maybe wisdom for you just to start to share. Oh, I have the impression, maybe, do you have uh, pain in your knee? Uh, or so, so, you know what I mean. Uh, try to get it on a normal communication level, but you feel if it's true or not. And then say, oh, the Lord just showed me, the God showed me, we believe in the living God, and uh, may I pray for you. And normally when we pray for people, they are always getting touched. Mm -hmm. And they feel that you are not talking about religion. And this is something we need. Okay? So, um, that is something to stir you up and to, I want to leave it with you with, uh, with this thought that there are thousands of ways you can share the gospel and the, 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 all of heaven is just waiting for you to back you up. You know what I mean? You, you, heaven could not be more ready to serve humanity than he it, he's already is. The, the, all of angels, are probably, I, I don't exaggerate, there are angels assigned to you that are ready to minister in the supernatural when you do something with the Word of God. And if the moment you step out, you already feel and you, you will experience that the Lord is with you. So don't, don't get just in, in methods and, and kind of, you know, like one, two, three, I have to do this. Listen to the Holy Spirit, but the most important thing is do something. Yeah, we all, even, even the pastors in Hong Kong said this should be a kind of a theme, that do something. Not, uh, not everybody has to do the same, but it's actually it's just, if you don't go, nobody else goes in your place. You, know, you could say, well, we have other people. Yes, but you are missing. Your part is missing, and probably some people will never hear the gospel if you don't share your story. You could, you could always say, yeah, the Lord can send somebody else. But we have only this generation to, to reach this generation. We only have one lifetime for these people. We, the, the gospel is for eternity. I, uh, the worship will be always for eternity. I love it. I, I'm looking forward to, to worship in eternity, but the preaching, the salvation part, we just have a short time. So I want to urge you also with the, with the call that is not just like a, a motivation speak. It's, it's really life or death for many, many people. 
And uh, I would love to see really many churches here in Hong Kong as well to rise up and to get a new level of active, just sharing the gospel. Be bold. Um, man, you cannot do the, the most, the biggest fault or mistake you can make is just to do nothing. You know, even if you, you blow it the whole time the first time, you have, you have conquered the fear that holds you back so long. You mean, just, just do it. Go, kick the devil in the face and say, here I am. And uh, I will share my story. And, uh, you know, we have different, different personalities and we have different kind of backgrounds. You don't have to be me. I don't have to be you or even your pastor or evangelist. Be yourself. But you are not fear. Your identity is not a fear. Do you understand this? You are a queen. You are a hero. You, you said it. Somebody said it today. We are not what we believe, what the, what the world made us believe we are. We are a conquering generation, a church, a church who has power. And fear is actually not our inheritance, and it's not our identity, and we can overcome it. So I leave that with you, and um, I don't know now uh, how we do it, but maybe we can pray together. Uh, just pray all together that, uh, that every one of us, and I include me totally, will be just touched and filled by the Holy Spirit. Because, you know, the, 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 the overcoming thing is actually the work of the Holy Spirit. That is why He came, to make us witnesses. So I would like to pray and just uh, encourage all of you to be with your heart. Not just, okay, this is a sermon, we do it because we're here in church. But let this day be a decision point for the next coming days and weeks to change something in your life and to make another or a new step or another step on a new level. If, you're, if you share your story, start to pray for the sick. And you know, there's always progress. And uh, so I would like to pray. Amen? Yeah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you so much that you have saved us. You have changed our lives. You have brought this church together. You are the reason why we are living. And we give you glory for that. And we give you glory that you have chosen us, human, imperfect human beings, to share this tremendous message of your salvation and your power with other people and with this great city of Hong Kong and all our families around the world. Lord, and we ask you right now, in the name of Jesus, that you will put Pour out your spirit by your power on everyone here in this house tonight and this morning that you will stir up the gift of evangelism. Stir up our hearts with the, with the, that we see that our eyes will be open for the need of the people and that they are on the way to hell. Lord, I would ask that you, our hearts will change and that we break down fear in the name of Jesus and every obstacle that hinders us to move in the gifts of the Spirit, to move in the power of your anointing and to touch heart and to change lives. And in the name of Jesus, Jesus, I release this, this freedom upon you. We release it right now over this church, a new level of freedom to share, to witness, to go out, to be bold, to be what you have called them to be. Not just to try something, but just to be it. Lord, we ask you for a revelation and a revolution in this city, in the spirit, the spirit of revival that raises up churches, bringing groups together to work together and to share the faith together in Jesus' name. Lord, and we break the power of religion and tradition over this city in the name of Jesus, that all the cultures and people will be open and fresh, receiving your word and your gospel like never before in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And if you have it on your heart, then just pray out loud. Lord, Lord, use me. Use my heart. Use my mouth. Use my hands to touch these people. And uh, let me step ahead. One step further than I have gone before. In the name of Jesus, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So thank you. And uh, I would love to see you 
because Pastor Rene will send to us pictures what has happened in Hong Kong, and I hope to see many of you sharing the gospel, at least on 14th, amen, and hopefully also in between. Amen. Yeah, amen. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Christian.